Okay, so just a quick rundown of this. This is the part we're going to make. And it takes four minutes and 30 seconds, and I haven't pushed any of the speeds and speeds for it. It's an aircraft Audi 2024 T351 on X Air Force. I know some of these materials is nice to machine and easy to cut, and it's quite salt strong. So it's about as strong as steel as far as tensile, but um, obviously a bit softer, so it won't shear the same, but pretty strong stuff. Um, this takes a couple of minutes to do, as I say, in a conventional workshop. Without this multi spindle multi axis machine, you'd have to go and maybe turn all this side of it in the lane, the hole in it, another machine, milling machine on the side, and then contour all this round the mill, and then you just do all the shaft and finish on the other side. So, three processes maybe, or you could do it on the mill depending on So, the setup time is triple the decimal away. This will do the whole thing in turned on this side, you've got a main spindle and a sub spindle. They'll transfer from here to here. Live tooling, so the tooling will spin as well. If you have a tool that's got an um, option on it, these are fixed tools. The lathe, fixed tool here. These ones will turn, <coughs> and they're in two orientations. <coughs> this machine was about three hundred thousand dollars to buy when we got it. We got a little bit cheaper because of Australian dollar. But bottom line is, there's an example of a machine like this. A place called Dinky Die Tooling down south. They have a million dollar machine. It's a few years old now. It's got dual spindle, dual turret. So one of these is attacking this side, one of these is attacking the other side. It's got live tooling that swings, so this will go from here to here in several orientations. It's got a few different tool setters to do all these different settings. And it's got a hundred tools in the back that go rotate and automatically change the production. So they can do the entire component that's out of tough steel hardened really complex bit made entirely in the machine finished in one go and the amount of setups in this part I saw would have been 10 12 setups to get it right and it's tough stuff and does it all in one go. 100 tools, tools are about a thousand dollars for the holder, you know, depending on what you have, plus the tool you've got, so you've got a hundred thousand dollars for the tools probably in the back as well. Okay. But impressive stuff. But I guess what's going on with those sort of things is lots of stuff going on lots of things to go wrong, lots of attention to detail. The program I'm going to run is a mixture of, I output this on SolidWorks, so I designed this on a SolidWorks um, X-Cyclist, used to make my own sprockets for racing, a bit of a pet project, so I got a design table in SolidWorks to load all the data from the spreadsheet into it and got all the tooth form dead right off the tooth, tooth form specs out of our Bible for machining, and just to do this on SolidWorks. Imported that into a cam package and put a tool bath over it. Which cam package? Master Cam X4 or 9.1, I think I was using this one. And then I did a bit of my own program writing longhand to, to do some other bits and pieces. So it's a mixture of my skills and software, I guess. So when we get to the tooth form here, on a mill we'll be contouring all this. On this machine, this uh, spindles can be used for milling purposes as well. So the machine can be put into milling mode to accommodate these tools. This can be locked if I want to, or it can be put into a um, rotary table where it'll be turning at a certain angle as per what you're machining. In that case, this will be sitting like so, the tool will come in, and then this will go plunging in and out. So different diameters as this angle changes. And when we go through that, you'll see there's X and C. C is the axis here and you'll see it going thousands of K going past very, very fast. It also speeds the feed rate up and slows it down depending when you're a large way out because this is a large surface to cover. The smaller it gets, this is a shorter distance. So change the feed to accommodate that to do our surface speed. Now, there's the item. You can take one of these with. I've got only a few. You can't all have one, but you can have grab one. How long is the course that they have in these? Behind, it'll probably be good to get all the basics in that side. Um, we've got speed rate rapid, and overall the feed rate. Rapid travel. It'll move, it'll just slide. Well, this is um, programmed for parameter. The rapid travels are when it's not actually machine users moving around. It could so. be, if I get it wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. I don't but want normally to do that's it. what it thinks. It's so that if, if the first person that crashed this was a comment made when we first got this machine, and this is the one I know more than anyone else basically because I teach it and that, just from uh, having access to it is, I don't want my name engraved on here as the first person to crash it, so the first thing we got is like, who's going to be responsible, it's not going to be me, I tell you, I'll be very safe. Yep. Um, 
but I use it more often, so the life of it is probably right. Um, override the feed rate, so when we got our spray on feed rate of millimetres per minute or uh, per rev in the lane, we're going to override the so I override the spindle speed, just to get things dead right when you've got close to look quite right. A few different modes, we control manually, uh, stuff there, there's lots of controls on the buttons here, so this is the default rapid, it'll just go dead slow, lots of protective stuff, so you have to turn things off to get the going for that out. It defaults to slow and single block, so you move one line at a time. So pretty protective. Um, so I'll just get into it, we'll have to be careful for the approach. If the approach is good, it's already just run the program like an MSD is up there today. I'll run it dry for the first part where it's just roughing it out and also the contouring of the teeth. Um, not ideal, but it'll be okay, but I need to have the corner going for the drink. So it'll be very messy, you won't see much. But coming close, it's a plate glass door. The door's locked so you can't get in anyway. This is cam output. This is... Is it possible to crash the other tools into the chuck when you're doing a legitimate operation with one of the other ones? Is it possible? You can possibly crash anything. <laughs> you can set up a boundary around the machine called a chuck barrier. Yeah. So an industry where they've got um, stuff that is really important and you can't afford to be um, close. I've got Z minus 5000 mil. <laughs> I'm in serious trouble. And you'd be surprised how many times you tell the students when they don't catch it. We had an incident yesterday, just didn't see it at all, 40 million of the job. Goodbye tool. Worst case scenario, someone gets injured, tools you can live with, right? But you know, it's not good when you break a thousand dollar tool or something like that. So I'm just going to Depending on where it moves. <laughs> I'm coming in slow for my first approach, just give me a second. Now, now I'll just pause it there. This is the most important.